A long time ago, people used to think that our Earth, the planet we live on, was flat like a board or a squished up ball. Well, actually, they didn't think it was completely flat. They knew that there were some bumpy things on it, like hills and mountains, but when they would look around from someplace really high, like from the top of a tall building, everything looked pretty flat. Well, nowadays, we know much more about the Earth than we used to. We know that our Earth is not really flat at all. It has a kind of round shape like this. So why doesn't the Earth look round to us when we look off in the distance? That's because the Earth is so big and we're so close to it that we just can't tell its shape very well from where we are. We'd have to get really far away. No, I mean really far away. This is what our amazing planet Earth looks like from outer space. Looking from here, our planet looks very different. We're high off the ground and you can see all kinds of things. Clouds, land, oceans of water. You can even see how the outside edge of the Earth is round. But from here, you still can't see the whole Earth. It's just too big. To see the whole thing, we need to get even further away, way out into space, all the way out to here. Now you can see how round our planet Earth really is. It's pretty incredible, huh? Okay, time to get back down to Earth now. Hold your breath. Well, it's one thing to look at our planet while we're standing on it, but a whole other thing to look at it from outer space, isn't it? But you know, there's a lot of things to learn about our Earth that we need to be close up to find out about. Well, like what's underneath this stuff? One way to find out what our Earth is made of is to actually dig down into it. I'll tell you this, the Earth is made of some pretty tough stuff. Have you ever dug a hole with a shovel before? It looks pretty easy, but it's really hard work. I used to think that I could dig a hole all the way through the Earth and come out upside down on the other side. Well. I tried and I tried, but never actually made it more than a little ways down. <laughs> well, once I dug down far enough to get myself stuck in the hole. Hello? Hello? Is anybody up there? Hello? But uh, that's a whole other story. Well, if you ever do try to dig any kind of hole in the earth, you'll probably end up coming across all kinds of things that are all different sizes. Soil like this might be one thing you find. Soil is a mixture of sand and living things like bugs and plants that have died and are becoming part of the earth. You also might have come across just, well, plain old sand. Sand comes from another thing you might have found rocks. Over time, well, big rocks break down into smaller and smaller rocks and they eventually break apart and become tiny bits of sand. So how does all this happen to begin with? Rocks get broken down into smaller parts through a process called weathering. Weathering happens when rocks get worn away over time. Waves are one thing that can break rocks down, but so can other things like water moving over rocks and rivers. Rain can weather things down too. Even where there's not a lot of water, plain old wind can really wear rocks down and even give them funny shapes. Our Earth is constantly changing, but it's not only because rocks are being weathered. You might not know it, but hot lava is really melted rock that's being pushed up from down inside the Earth. It comes out of volcanoes on the Earth's surface. New rock is constantly bubbling, spewing, and pouring out of the ground. The hot rock eventually cools off and becomes a new part of the Earth's surface. So you see, 
Earth is made of things that are all different sizes, from big boulders to tiny grains of sand. And it's always changing, building up and weathering down and making a great place for us to live. Ouch, my foot. Yo, it's me, Rocky the Rock, star of many hit movies. You know, my career hasn't been all ice cream cones and soda pop. I spent a lot of time in the ring with hard hitters and took some pretty heavy punches. I thought that once I retired from the biz, that would be the end of that. But as it turns out, I was wrong. Every time I get caught in a rainstorm, or I go swimming, or even when the doggone wind blows, I keep breaking down into smaller and smaller pieces. Pretty soon, there's gonna be nothing left of me. Oh well. Well, you know, I'm Stu the Champ. Yo, I'm Rocky the Rock. Uh-oh. The Earth is covered with all different kinds of things. Some of those things are living things. You're a living thing, I'm a living thing, and this plant is a living thing. There are many different kinds of living things that could be found on our planet. And the Earth is the only planet we know of that has everything we need to stay alive. Animals are living things that can be found all over the Earth. Animals can be found in wet places, dry places, and all kinds of places that are sort of in between. There are other kinds of living things all over the world too. Plants are living things that can be found almost everywhere. It's hard to walk outside without seeing some kind of plant. There are even living things in places on our Earth that we can't see unless we use a really strong magnifier. We call these living things we see in a magnifier microscopic organisms. The Earth is also made up of parts that are not alive. We call those things non-living. Can you think of some non-living things? I'll bet you can. Just look around you. You probably see all kinds of non-living things. Do you see anything made of metal? Metal's not a living thing. The world is full of non-living things. Believe it or not, most of our planet Earth is covered with water. Water is not a living thing. It's non-living. Sand is not alive either. It's also non-living. Rocks are non-living things. And so are mountains. The air that you breathe is not alive. And if you could look inside the Earth, you wouldn't find anything alive there either. You see, there are lots of different things that are found all over our Earth, both living and non-living. So, how do you actually tell them apart? Well, living things like us have the ability to grow and change on our own. We move by ourselves. If something is hot or cold or... Or if we hear a scary noise, we can react to it. And living things can even make more living things. Non-living things can't. <laughs> Non-living things just change depending on what they're made of or what happens to them. Ouch! Not again! Oh, my foot! There are three main kinds of areas that can be found on and around the Earth. Right now, unless you're traveling in an airplane, you're probably dealing with at least two of them, whether you know it or not. First, there are parts of the Earth that are completely covered with land. Next, there are also parts of the Earth that are completely covered with water. There's actually more water than there is land on the Earth's surface. And finally, there's air. A layer of air surrounds the entire Earth like a thin blanket. It goes all the way around from one side to the other. What's really amazing is that living things can be found in all those places, land, water, and air. The easiest place for us to see living things, though, is on land. I mean, look at you. You live on land, and you're a living thing. Well. Uh, unless you live on a boat or, or a space station. But most people live on land. 
but we're not alone. There are lots of plants, animals, and other living things that live on land too. Scientists have found millions and millions of different kinds of living things on land, and they're finding new ones all the time. Life flourishes on land in many different ways, and living things use the land for their survival. When you look out at the water, it doesn't seem like there's many living things out there, does it? Well, if you went under the water, that would be a whole other story. There are also millions of different kinds of living things underwater all around the world. Some things live in fresh water. Some things live in salty water. Just like things on land depend on the land, these creatures depend on the water for their survival. You probably don't think very much about living things in the air until you actually see them. But there are all kinds of things like birds and flying insects that spend a lot of time there. Living things need all these areas, land, water, and air. And they find them all right here on our amazing planet Earth. The Earth Rocks. We live on the Earth. From where we are, the Earth looks flat. But when we see the Earth from outer space, we could tell it has a round shape. The hard surface of the Earth is made of rocks of all different sizes, from mountains, to boulders, to tiny grains of sand. They're all rocks. Rocks get worn down over time because of weathering. And new rocks are formed as lava pours out from deep inside the Earth. Rocks are not living things. They are non-living. But there are also lots of living things, like animals, plants, and even tiny microscopic organisms. Living things can be found all over the Earth, on land, in the air, and even in the water that covers most of the Earth's surface. Our Earth is amazing and can be very different from place to place. What's the Earth like where you live? So now you know, the Earth is not flat. It's big and round and covered with water and land and a blanket of air all around it. But inside the real Earth, it's not filled with air like this one. It's made of hot rock and metal and other stuff deep down inside. But on the outside of the Earth, there's not only rocks, there are other things too. Living things, people, plants, animals, all kinds of things. Yep, the Earth is a pretty amazing place. It has everything we need to live for you and me. Science and me. Thank you.